Hello, guys. Welcome to ZTV Presents Tech View. Another episode today. Uh, actually, I'm going to make the series video, like uh, which is part five for BMR Home Lab. So, as a part five, uh, we gonna we supposed to build a nested ESX environment. But before we build the nested ESX environment, we should have some. Um, Prerequisite or actually nested nested SXI, you never gonna see in your real environment. Your environment means enterprise level. Whatever the place you're gonna work, you're never gonna see it. So why you why I'm going to show you? The reason I'm going to show you, this is the series of video for your home lab, right? So if you want to make your home lab, you don't gonna have like three physical or five physical SXI hosts which is gonna cost you a lot of money. To save your money, if you have one physical server on top of the one physical server, if you install VMware ESXi, and then after that, what are you gonna do with the one ESXi host? You cannot get the actual flavor of VMware, all the VMware feature. You cannot utilize all VMware feature, right? Which is VMware high availability, VMware, uh, like which is called VMware cluster, um, DRS, register, uh, um, uh, DR, DRS, resource scheduler, distributed resource scheduler, uh, high availability, vMotion, or uh, distributed switch, standard switch, a lot of configuration, a lot of um, features you can implement if you have it, like if in your real environment, right? So how are you going to do it on your home lab to utilize the whole thing? the BMR, BMR cluster environment, to create a BMR cluster environment, you should have at least minimum five physical hosts. Three hosts in your primary side and two hosts in your maybe DR side, just a recovery side, remote side, and another location, right? Another data center. So how much money are you gonna need to spend, like invest just for learning? And most of you are, will not be able to do that, right? So that's why I'm making this video how you can achieve all those things in one physical server. So whenever I'm coming, whenever I'm talking about one physical server, that means one ESXi host, but with one ESXi host, you cannot do that. So how many hosts you need? You need at least minimum five. How are you gonna get this five? So there is no alternative way you can, but there is a way you can make five hosts, ESXi host, without buying a physical server. How? If you create a nested ESXi, so that's why nested ESXi concept only gonna work in your home lab or in your personal use. It's not gonna work out in your uh, real environment. So that's what I'm going to show you. But exactly whatever you're gonna do on the nested ESXi, the all kind of BMR configuration, you can do same thing on your environment. But for to have a nested ESXi, I'm going to show you some extra information that you don't need maybe on your real environment. It's just only need your home lab environment. So what do you need? I already shows you some already on my video, uh, which is like part uh, one, two, three, and four. So uh, now I'm going to summarize. So I'm not sure which video I shows. One of the video I shows how to, you, how to create the rate system and then what should be your plan how are you gonna do your rate system if you have only one ESXI host? So that's what I'm going to repeat it again now, but very quickly, just give you an overview. If you guys already know that, you can just skip it. Don't worry about it. And also I'm going to show you how you create, so based on your plan, because you have only one host, right? So you have to create your SAN, your BSAN, your nested ESXI space, your BMS space, a lot of stuff you need to do, right? So how are you gonna do that? I'm gonna, because I already explained it in different, different video, but in this video within uh, five to 10 minutes, I'm going to describe and show exactly the, just to the summarize all those. So let's get started. Uh, I'm, so before I go there, I'm going to, sh um, before we go there, okay, let me, let me, let me show, um, let me share my screen first. Otherwise it's not gonna show you. Okay, here. So this is my screen, right? 
And this is our plan. So in our last video, we created a VM and inside the VM, we install uh, tools which can give us the iSCSI feature, right? Which is Starwin. And we, we add some storage, raw storage from our eSaxer host. We mounted on the uh, Windows VM server. And then through this, and also through uh, um, Starwin, we created a SAN storage, right? So I'm gonna show you exactly same thing again today. Plus, so to summarize all one, two, three, four videos, it's going to, I will take maximum 10 minutes. And then from after 10 minutes, I'm gonna start uh, this one based on our target. It's true for the uh, part of for, uh, part five, part five, which is uh, we're gonna create a nested ESXi. So one, two, three, we're gonna create three BM with nested ESXi. And also we have to create actually four and five. What is the 13, 11, 13, 14, what is the 14? Oh, here, the total five nested ESX we're gonna create. And out of five, two of, three of them we're gonna use for one data center and the three, two we're gonna use for other data center, other location, I would different subnet. So I'll show you everything step by step. So stay with me. And if you know, whatever I'm going to show right now, if you know already, just skip it. Don't worry about it. It's a summary, okay? Uh, so let's go to the iDRAC. I'm going to the iDRAC. This is one of my ESXA host. Okay, that's done, okay. Um, this is, this one is the, so it's, I, uh, um, my host number three, this is my host number three. Actually, I have three ESXA hosts, but I'm just going to show you if you have only one, how you're gonna do that. So this is the one, think about this is your server, okay? Just think about this is your server. What I'm going to do, I'm going to launching the window and I'm going to reboot it. So reboot means here, cool boot, right? Cool boot, okay. And oh, monitor to the KVM. This is the KVM window. This is called KVM window. If you look at here, you're gonna see here, KVM or virtual console or maybe KVM. You're gonna see KVM, see here, KVM. So I just rebooted and I want to do the RAID configuration again. I, I, I I'll um, break down the RAID system, but I have two partition, one with RAID 5, another one is only RAID 0, and only one drive. So the one drive with RAID 0, which is I assign ESXi, I install ESXi, we assign for OS, operating system, right? But that one I'm not going to break down. I'm just going to break down the second partition. Um, and I'll show you actually, uh, how many more partitions you need based on your plan. So if you want to test iSCSI and also uh, uh, nested ESL environment with DSN, so you should have at least three partition in your physical machine, three partitions. So quickly, Control R, Control R, see, I'm press, pressing Control R. If you don't press Control R, it, you, it never gave you the RAID system. See here, Control S here, now it's Control R, right? Control R and Control R, I press Control R. Yes, I got it. So the first position, I don't need to change it. I don't need to break it because this is already installed. Yes, Excite. I'm going to break it down now, this one. I'm just going to show you again how to how you're going to configure your machine RAID. So if you have like five to six uh, hard drive, it's, it's really good for you to configure everything. Uh, F2, and I'm going to delete the partition. This is the partition, yes. And then going down here, F2, I'm going to delete the partition, yes. Okay, so how many drives, except this, this one is RAID 0. And uh, all these are now unconfigured. So unconfigured desk, I need two partitions. So one partition with just RAID 0, which I'm gonna use. See here, oh, my all hard drive is same, but only one hard drive, we, it has almost one terabyte, right? 931 gigabyte is almost close to one terabyte. So that hard drive, I'm gonna use it for, um, to configure my iSCSI SAM. I already show you guys in my uh, fourth video, video like part four, I already shows how to configure or set up um, iSCSI SAM. So you can watch that video. And if you know that video, and if you understand, skip this part, it's completely okay. So this one, I'm, I'm really quickly, I'm showing you. So I'm going to uh, all the way top, and then I'm hitting F2 and then 
in any video and render zero is fine because I want to take just only one hard drive from here. That's it. And so in here, this one, I'm gonna use this space I'm gonna use for I can just send. So I can say send or something. It's, name doesn't matter, okay? Just for your understanding, okay? And also you, based on your company, send that. All right. And then I have four more, right? That last four, I'm gonna create a plate five. All right, five and okay. So if I can also create red six because red six record six hard drive, right? Red five record only three, but fault tolerance is one hard drive. If one hard drive goes bad, still you can have another one. Okay. So what's the name of this? You can say, uh, so this space you're gonna use for BSN, right? Oh, uh, you can say capacity. Capacity. All right, so I have to run three partition in this server, right? So the first one I already installed the SXI and I, I believe um, you guys already understand because I showed my first or second video how to install vendor customized SXI on a physical machine. So that's what it's, it already have here. So now I'm going to click escape button because I am done and hit okay and control alter delete. I'm going to hit control alter delete from the keyboard because if I hit Control Alter Delete from the keyboard here, from, from my physical keyboard, from my, this physical keyboard, then what's gonna be happen? My computer screen, because this is my laptop, so my computer screen will be lost. That's why I took this virtual keyboard. And Control, Alter, and Dell. Now it's rebooting, okay? So it's gonna boot it to the operating system. That's fine, that's fine. So I'm just waiting and until I'm wait, so I can go. All right, so look like the ESX is going to be load now. So good sign. We have to wait a couple of minutes. And this is my actually uh, base center server environment, but don't worry and don't look at here, okay? You will have only one host. So think about my host number three is your host. That's only one host, okay? I have two other hosts actually. But for your case, just think about you have only this host. So this host is not online yet because of, uh, it's still already booting and booting is not done yet. It's almost done, just that much left. So after that, we're gonna set up a local disk. So we can learn actually how to, um, like whenever you have a partition inside a physical server, how you can claim that disk as a local disk. That's also you can learn. Plus, and, and after that, our today's target is to create nested SXI. So you should create five nested SXI on top of this machine and based on the nested SXI plan, because on, inside the nested SXI, you're gonna build what? You're gonna build uh, BSEN because to practice, to have a BSEN, right? For your practice, right? So if you want to do that, if you want to do that practice, um, what you should have? Um, you should have some, um, okay. So this is actually back online. Okay, this, is, this one is back online. 13 is here shows. All right, so think about this is your host. Just think about this is your host. So what are you gonna do? Whenever you add this, so you're gonna have only one host, right? Don't, don't, don't worry about two other hosts. Just look at on this host. So you think about you created a data store. You don't have any cluster because one host, you cannot make a cluster, right? So you just add it under the data center. You just add your host. And then what are you gonna do? from the vCenter, select your host, 
go to the configuration and then storage adapter and you're going to see there is an adapter here it has three positions see here target devices three positions three path so this one we already installed data means data store one which we install already yes exercise and uh, these two is not configured yet or it's not claimed yet we're going to claim it right now so what are you going to claim action or you can right click here you can go storage in the new data store and bmfs and you can name it whatever the name you want so this is the host number three right that, that's how I, I named yeah it, it doesn't matter it up to you how you're going to name it so em uh, e host 03 lds is local data store uh, 01 which is uh, the local data store i'm going to utilize which is this one 1.64 terabyte click next click next and if you want you can you can utilize the whole thing you can take whole thing or you can take just up to one terabyte and rest of the part if you need in later on you can claim it so but for now i'm just doing with the whole thing click next on this and we can finish so this one is already configured right now i have this one so this one i'm going to reserve for configuring um great so this space i'm gonna uh, attach with one of my bm which is be a, the virtual machine is set up for uh, uh, BSN configuration so you guys already know if you watch my part four video it has on my part four video so you can watch part four video or you can watch this one i'm quickly show you again same thing i'm showing you again how you can do that okay so first you need to claim it because it's not showing on the uh, I format, I, I break it down everything. So it's not showing on the host, uh, physical host. So how are you going to do the same thing, same way? But you can have a different name. Or if you have a same name, it doesn't matter. It's a local storage. It doesn't matter if you can remember, okay, this is the host number three and data store number, local data store number two. It doesn't matter. Or you can say local data store send. This one is related to send. Or don't 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 do that local data this is local data store because we're going to have another send storage when we configure real send right so lds02 this this host has two data store click next okay select this one and click next 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 finish all right all are done so if you now go to the data store you're going to see here this is local data store, this is local store, also this is local data store. this one which one by default this data store name if we see it's like this that means it's a um os install on this data. so but we are not doing anything on here so this local two partitions one of the partitions has less than a gigabyte less than a terabyte i'm gonna use it for uh my vcent server right so what is my vcent server i'm going to move my vcent server okay i have a vcent here this send server this send server i'm going to move migrate migrate to next this is number three and finish. So it's already moved. If you look at here, uh, it's host number three, right? So it's already moved. Power on, I'm going to power on. Okay, it's power on. Okay, it has some issues. Okay, let's see what the issues. All right, any, no, don't no worry. Um, don't worry. Uh, so host number three, right? Uh, is host number three. If you go to the BMs, you're going to see the BM here and it's going to power on. Maybe I click twice. That's why it shows the issue. Actually, there is no issue. It's just going to power on. But now the machine storage machine is running from uh, NAS storage, but I can convert that NAS storage to the local because it's always slow. I'm, I don't want to actually have like this. So the same, this machine, what I'm saying actually, if you go to the edit options, you're gonna see the operating system I installed, that hard drive is coming from where? I'll show you. This one. This one is coming from NAS storage, network attached. So I'll migrate this storage from this one to local. Local means on the post number three, local storage. So maybe I can I can I can I can migrate this 
space to this one because this one has a uh, little more storage. Uh, it has like how much storage left? Three is 127. I don't need 127 like for the operating system. I need only 100, right? It's fine. And also I'm gonna attach here extra drive, which is to utilize this uh, 9, 930 gigabyte space, right? So that storage I'm gonna attach now here. So how I can attach it? I'm going to add the edit, edit, add new device, hard disk, and how much? Say 900. Oh, sorry, 900. I have 930 or something, right? So 30, I'm not taking 30, just nine, it's straight 900. Or you can say 924. 900, sorry, 900 is fine. 900 gigabyte, okay? But make sure it's a thin provision. And uh, data store, which data store? The data store is supposed to be this one, the one, this one. You see here, local storage number two, this, this space actually I want to use as a iSCSI send. So that's why you have to mention this one, okay? If you guys are confused, um, the reason we make three partitions because one of the partitions we're gonna dedicate it. I, we don't have any sand storage, right? Sand storage is pretty expensive. So we want to get the sand flavor. Uh, for getting the sand flavor, I need space. So I need to assign some space to my uh, Windows machine. Then from that Windows machine, there is a tool called Starwind. So through the Starwind, if we have a space, we can utilize this. We can create, we can initiate, we can create a sand storage and then sends, that sand storage is gonna be show to the configuration show on the uh, BMR, uh, B, uh, B, um, B center, right? So that's what I'm going to do that. So I have added already and it's coming from the local storage. Okay, I am going to attach a storage. It's already done almost. So this already is attached. So it, it's already attached and sand machine is already open. And I have my sand machine here. I'm going to uh, going RDP on it. So this is RDP here, BSN, RDP. I'm just doing RDP, nothing else. So when I do the RDP, the machine is a little slow, but I'm going to, after I, I moved this machine to my local storage, the operating system drive, like C drive. C drive is still running from um, share storage, which is uh, NAS storage, it's pretty slow. Okay. So I have I need to go to my, uh, server manager because I added extra drive on my VM, but it's not claimed inside the VM. So whenever you wants to add more hard drive, more space, more disk, you know, Windows machine, Windows virtual machine, so you have to add first on the VM level from the VM or our center site, and then. You have to claim it inside the Windows machine. So now I'm going to claim it. So if you go, just why I'm just launching the server manager. So from the server manager, um, I'm going. So it's a file storage, and then the volume, and then see here, the volume and C drive and right click on it. If it is not showing here, what are you gonna do? Just on, on the way, uh, top left, top right, scan and say yes. Still it's not showing, right? Desk, what it shows. Okay, if you go to the desk, it's gonna show you offline desk. Right click on it, bring online, yes. So it's online, right? Now you can initialize it, yes. And then you can uh, say new volume and click next and click next, click next, click. Uh, you can say data store or something because, uh, okay, so actually here, data store, the volume name, data store, because we're gonna use the whole drive for creating a sand storage. That's why you're naming data store. Name doesn't matter, whatever you want, based on your company's naming convention and create. So 
So that's how we can add. So you are learning extra thing, which is it's not just only for creating a decent. In any case, whenever you need to add more extra drive on your existing DM, that's the way. That's the way you can add it and close it. So now if you go to the folder options, the file explorer, you're gonna and click that this PC, you're gonna see there's another extra drive. So you can say here, send. So instead of send, we have to create a loan. So I'm going to create through the, I, you can see, if you guys watch my previous video, uh, with the part four video, I showed there how you can uh, have some sand storage to the star wind. So I have already star wind installed and I'm just going to open it and right click on here and connect. It's already connected, of course. No, it's not connected yet, but now it's connected successfully. Now you're gonna see target and devices. If you don't see target and devices, that means it's not connected. What you should do, I click on it, say connect. Now you can create a device and target both, whatever you want, you can do that. So right, add a device, it's gonna be virtual disk, click next, and it's an image file device, click next, and create a new virtual disk, click next. And here, you should go browse, and in here, E drive, right? This is the E drive, this is send, see your send, and then, you can say lon, L U and lon, zero one dot. We can create multiple lon, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to do here only lon, L U and lon zero one uh, dot img. Img. This is the format of this star ring because this is going to create an image, lon creating. So okay. And, and here, how many gigabyte? We have 900, right? So I can say 895 gigabyte. And you can compress, click next. And the synchronous mode is fine. Click next. And read, uh, write back caching or no caching. Actually, no caching, select no caching, click next. And now target. So target, you don't have the target name, right? So you can say, um, fan01 and click here, like on this, click next and next and finish. So now you just created device image and created now target. So target is already created because whenever you create this one and that's time it's asking, you create a new new uh, target, right? So target is created, device is attached as an image. So now you need to claim that storage. Now is now Starwood is going to give you a sense storage. You just need to add the loan on your. Um, so this part, because whatever I did right now on the Starwind, maybe you never need to do on your real environment. Never, because you don't want to see this Starwind software in your environment. So what are you gonna see? You're gonna see maybe daily unity storage, maybe there other storage or maybe three, uh, three pair storage or some storage, right? Like iSCSI sense storage. So iSCSI sense storage is up to what kind of vendor based on their system, based on their instruction, you know, you're gonna create the loan. So the way we created loan here, same thing you're gonna create a loan. So whenever your loan creation is done, usually I'm telling you very quickly, shortly, so, Unity, they are Dell Unity Sand, EMC Unity Sand storage. How are you gonna create? So first you have to create a pool, storage pool, then on, inside the storage pool, you can create a multiple loan. And whenever loan is creation is done, then you're gonna claim that loan, you're gonna assign that loan or claim that storage or assign that loan to the BMR side. So BMR side configuration is same for everywhere, everywhere. So now I'm going to show you on the BMR, on the B center side, how you're gonna claim, how you're gonna assign this storage as the iSCSI send on the B center. That's what I'm going to show. So this system is same. So how are you gonna attach it? You, if you have a cluster system or you don't have a cluster system, whatever, whatever you have. So everything you can do, so see here, what it shows. It is alert, right? Because I already utilized 900 gigabyte out of 930 gigabytes. So that's why 
the machine seems like it's already overloaded. That's why it's alerting. It's fine, completely fine, no issues. We know we didn't do anything yet, but we're gonna just we're gonna reserve the whole capture the reserve the whole storage. That's why it's alerting us. Okay. Anyway, so if you have multiple hosts, any in a one cluster anywhere, you can attach. Uh, you can attach it, but before you do that, you have to have a send storage adapter configure. So I shows that option also in my part four video. Watch my part four video because on part four video I explain each and every options how you want to create that adapter. So if you look at here virtual switch, I have but second virtual switch where I created a adapter, iSCSI send adapter port group, iSCSI port group, and also attach with our NIC card. And I have created the same thing on each and every host. Each and every host, I have created this. Each and every host, I have created this. So whatever, if you have 300 machine, you have to do 300 machine, the same thing. But if you want to, if you don't want to do same stuff, configuring for 300, repeating again and again, again and again, in that case, you can, there's an alternative way, which is called distributed switch. I didn't show the distributed switch, I'll show you guys on my other video, and that is maybe next video, the complete whole network configuration, that time you can learn from there. But for now, watch my previous video, which is part four, and part four, I explain actually how I, how I create this uh, port group, send port group, okay? So what I'm gonna do, this is the host, right? Anyone, any one of the hosts in the cluster, but, but for your case, it's just only one, right? So how are you gonna claim it? So just select your host and select this and you need to add it, right? So storage, if you, oh, oh first, I, another thing you have to do, storage, add an adapter and you have to add uh, iSCSI adapter, but I already enabled it, that's why it's, it's a gray out. You have to do that. And then you wanna see BMHBA64 iSCSI online, you can, you're gonna see this one. So whenever you wanna see this one, your first job is to you select this one, iSCSI, and then you have you, you have to do add the network port binding. So if if this is not available, say for example, it's not available here. Just remove it. Okay, I'm just removing it. Okay, you scan it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to select it again. So I'm going to select it again and add. So your first job is to add a port binding, right? So this is the port we we created for. Uh, assigning the send, right? Send data accessing port. So data will be like transact through this iSCSI send. All the traffic goes with this, this port. And I, I have assigned this NIC card for this. Okay. So network port is assigned. And then I, I need to actually do the re-scan, but I'm gonna do the uh, uh, finally after we add dynamic and static discovery. The dynamic discovery is nothing at the, your send storage. So our send storage is this one, right? This and or maybe your IP address, whatever you want. Yeah. Click okay. And static discovery gonna be, or if you if you select it again, static gonna, it's gonna be sure automatically, but you need to scan it, scan storage, okay. So now I have only one target, this comes one. If you have multiple targets in one, under the one send, so you're gonna see all multiple links. Okay, let's go here. Now, I'm able to see this one, I'm able to see this one, I'm able to see this one, right? So everything I'm able to see. And if you go to the storage device, you're gonna see here the storage. So which one you want to actually utilize? So now, as a send, which one I'm, I'm going to do that? Send storage. So here, 895. So this is my send, right? So, you, so for understanding, it says rocket, iSCSI is something, but for your understanding, you can rename it. So I'm going to rename it. I'm not going to delete everything. I'm just going to remove this rocket. You can say, so this is Starwin. Or you can mention Starwin or a Unity. If it is a Unity store, then you can say Unity. Say for example, Unity, whatever, it doesn't matter based on your device, right? So based on your uh, iSCSI storage, name it, is Dell Unity and say Unity, or if it is a, B, a BNX, say BNX, if it is a, a 3 pair or say HP 3 pair, 
whatever. I'm just giving an example, right? Okay, click OK. It's I scary. Unity I scary this. Actually, there's no unity, but just I name it unity. Okay. So I, I need to claim this one, right? It's already added. I need to claim this one. So how are we gonna claim it? Same system. Go to the action or right click on it. Right click on it. Go to the storage, new data store, same system, DMFS, the same system. Now you're gonna see it. Unity I scary C L space, right? So what are you gonna name it? You can say SAM01. In future, if you have more SAM, um, or you can say SAM01, SAM02, SAM03, whatever you want, or Unity SAM, or, or, or maybe HP pair SAM underscore, blah, 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 whatever. Maybe based on the department. Naming is, 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 is supposed to be based on the naming convention. In our case, we don't have nothing. That's why I said SAM01. Okay, next. Next, and finish. So it's done. If you go now, if you go now here, data store, you're gonna see SAM01. So this SAM01 is available here. And if you click now here, this, I have two other hosts. Don't worry about these two other hosts. You're not gonna have this, but I'm just showing you just, I'm just showing you. If you have any other host, five, 10, 12 hosts in a one cluster, and on each and every host has a BSM, a BM kernel port configured. And whenever you add one, it's gonna show all, all other. So how, if you just do the refresh here, you're gonna see it. No, sorry. Why you know, you're not gonna see it? Because in here on the configuration, there is no adapter. So just add the adapter. It's no discovery, no adapter, right? So you just need to add the adapter. Adapter is there, okay, adapter is here already attached. The same way, the way I, I added here. And what you need is just into the discovery. Add the discovery, that means your send storage, IPR name, so okay. And then scan. You don't need to claim it. The way I claim it here, you don't need to claim it. You just need to add the dynamic discovery, that's it. Because you already claim on the three and all other three, uh, three, rest of the host will be there automatically. Just you need to add the discovery here and also make sure port binding is correct. Okay. And network port binding is there, right? Okay. So you just scan it. Okay. And now go back to the host one. You can see here, data store. See, send is here, available. I didn't claim it. The way I did on the host number three, right click on it, go to the storage, right? I, I go, I went to the storage and then I, I select BMFS. That process I didn't do for this one, this one, right? But it automatically came here. It automatically came here, send. So now the same storage I have on my all three hosts. That's called a send shell storage. I believe you guys understand, right? So now uh, I'm gonna build five or okay. I'm gonna build five BSX based on a B send. Uh, B send. Uh, actually, no, sorry. Uh, so five nested ESX, right? So three of them are gonna create uh, in our BCM, Virginia uh, data center and two of them are gonna put on a uh, NOI data center with different subnet. And the BS data center are gonna create BSEN data store, but on the NOI, I'm gonna use this same SAM. That's all. Thank you. Thank you guys. And um, actually not, I'm not finishing. I'm just going to give you a um, short break and I will be back. And I'm gonna, we're gonna create five necessary success host. All right, so we are ready. Actually, we are not ready to uh, apply the uh, necessary SXI. So again, uh, the reason we are trying to implement necessary SXI because we want to get the actual flavor of BMR ESXi cluster high availability environment. Not only BMR cluster high availability environment, um, not only on um, primary side, that is uh, the production side. So we are also looking for a DR side, this is a study covered set. So we want a class, high availability cluster um, on our primary side and also on the uh, dear side, it means remote location. 
It's a different location with different sub, right? So two cluster system in two different locations. So, and we need total five ESXA, but we don't have five physical machines. We have only one physical machine. That's what we are going to do. That's why we are going to implement nested ESXA environment. So let's get started. And also before we start to install the ESXA as a nested ESXA, we have to make some plan. So that, this is the plan. So whenever you have one ESXA host, and if you have at least 2.5 terabyte of storage, that means you need some, I already showed you guys how you can configure your RAID system, right? To make a partition. So <clears throat> um, in my, uh, this ESXi, I'm going to show you. So if you look at my, with one of this ESXi, so I have a local storage here. So I, that local storage I added is a SAS storage because I have two partition, right? One partition I install, ESXi, another partition, I add this SAS storage, second partition, I, I'm, I added all hard drive together with RAID 5, and that one I claimed as a, what? BMFS data store, right? So if you go to here, data store, you can see here. E means uh, my ELS, and host is CLS number host and 02 number host and LDS, local data store, 01. So that is the store I found total 2.45 terabyte. So I have four, four, uh, four five terabyte. Maybe you can have less than that. Maybe you can have more than that. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. And also whatever the your storage, local secondary partition storage you have, based on that, make your plan. And also um, my, Data store side, my uh, uh, I have one hard drive where I install where I install uh, ESXi. That one has uh, free space one twenty four. Total capacity is one hundred twenty eight, and one twenty four is left free. That means when I install the ESXi, it consumes only four gigabyte of space. So for ESXi, ten terabyte is enough. Ten terabyte is enough to reserve, and out of ten, whenever you install the ESXi, it's gonna consume four terabyte. Uh, sorry, four gigabyte. So I have a plan. I will deploy all the necessary SXI uh, OS drive on this, and then rest of the data store I'm going to take from here. So this is the plan. If you have 2.5, so you can make a plan like host Virginia BA01. This is our Virginia data center primary site. So on the primary side, I'm planning to have three nested SXI host, and on the dear side, which is uh, actually this one should be NY. NY New York and NY02. NY02. And this one will be 0, 1, 2, and this one will be 3. Okay, all right. So, Virginia said 3, but actually you have physical host, uh, one host, right? So, you're going to create five virtual machines on top of this physical machine. And what should be the configuration? What should be the data store configuration? What should be the network configuration? So everything you have to make a plan before you start, okay? So the first host, 10 gigabyte space reserved for ESXi, 100 gigabyte space for cache tier, and 600 gigabyte of capacity tier. So how I come up with this? It up to your total volume because I want to implement total how many? Five of them. So these two data, these two, like a disaster recovery side uh, host, I didn't add all the, these drives capacity and, uh, and cache tier. Why? Because in here, I'm gonna add uh, sand storage. So if I build any machine, I'm gonna use the sand storage. And in here, I'm gonna use sand storage, plus I'm gonna implement vSAN. Why I'm going to doing vSAN here? Nothing else. I can use the sand storage, but the, the, the reason I'm building vSAN here, because I want to show you guys how to create a BSEN. So for BSEN, you need minimum three hosts. Minimum, how many hosts? Three hosts. For a cluster, two hosts is fine. Minimum is two hosts. If you have more, that is fine. But for creating um, clustered BSEN storage, in that case, you need minimum three, three hosts. Okay. So we have three hosts here. But we will, not, we'll, we will have in a studio SXA host. So, I don't need to give you guys flavor here and there, both sides, no, I don't need it. 
the reason we are we are going to build a, a home lab and we want to get actual flavor of or and our enterprise level flavor of BMR ESXi or BMR BS pair environment, right? Virtual environment. So if you can test here, if that's fine. I don't need to test on my primary side and the static over side. I need just shell storage. That's it. It can be BSEN, it can be uh iSCSI SEN, it can be FCSEN, it can be NES. Anything is fine for creating a virtual machine. All right. So based on your total capacity, you can make a plan. So 600, 600, 600, that's 1800, right? And here's another 100, 100, 100, that's 300, right? 300, 800, 2100. 2100 means it's still less than 2.5 terabyte. And this 10 terabyte, 10 terabyte is nothing, right? If you have more, you can maybe give maximum 40. We don't need more than 40 gigabyte. 10 gigabyte is actually enough. All right. So, but for getting a BSEN, you must need a cache tier storage and also the capacity tier storage to create a BSEN. That's why I write it down here, cache tier and capacity tier. So cache tier is actually uh, read write. It's gonna be read write speed. Um, so 100 gigabyte is enough and 600 gigabyte is total capacity. So whenever we're gonna create a BSEN, it's gonna add this one, this one, and this one as a capacity, as a usable, as a usable storage. So we can we'll have at least 1.8 terabyte of usable storage. But this 100 gigabyte you cannot use it. It's going to use for input output, read and write. So that's the main concept of BSEN. Okay. And how many how many NIC card you're going to add because we want standard configuration. We're going to utilize complete BMR, like whole, all features of BMR. Spare. So in that case, what are we going to do? I I want to add seven NIC card for each host. Seven NIC card because it's a virtual machine, right? Virtual is pretty easy. If you have a physical machine and you are trying to add a NIC card, you have to order a physical NIC card and, and you have to wait for it. When you, you, when you get it, you have to open the from servers and you have to attach, you have to setting, set up the uh, NIC card. And after that, you can start, right? But it's going to take time. But for virtual, nested ESXi, as much as you can add it, but actually as not as much as much as you want, as actually it's not true. Maximum, you can add 10 um, at network adapter, which is NIC card or maybe network port, you can say. Actually, NIC card and port is not the same. The reason is, in physically, one NIC card can have one port, one NIC card can have two port, one NIC card can have four port, right? So one NIC card is means not is a one port or four port or five port, right? So we need at least seven port in each nested ESXi. So that is what we need to add seven virtual network adapter in each. And our maximum capacity is 10. We can add 10 adapter in each VM. So that's what we're going to do. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, let's go to do the practical. Okay, so now this is the machine, right? So based on my plan, oh, sorry, I'm going to show you another thing because I have actually three hosts. In your case, you're gonna have only one host. That's what the plan I showed here. But this plan is for mine because I have three SXA hosts and based on my storage, and I'm going to assign 40 gigabyte of space for SXA. Don't follow mine because you have to assign 10, 10 gigabyte or 40 gigabyte based on your uh, capacity, how much you have. But I have, I, because I have three hosts, so I'm going to um, create this whole, this VM, nested VM or nested DSX in here, this one in here, this one is here. And also for disaster recovery, I'm going to create the first one in my this host and second one on this, this host. Or maybe I can build it here. Anyway, anyway. And how many CPU you're gonna assign? That's another thing, right? So you have to make a plan. So how many CPU you have? You have to check first. So for example, how are you gonna check it? How many CPU you have? So if you go to the configuration and go all the way down here, processor, 
you're going to see how much processor you have. So logical processor, you have two socket, right? And, and processor core per socket is eight, right? That means 16. Physical PCPU is 16, but logical CPU is 32. So you have maximum 32. So for each ESXi, how much or how many you can assign and also how much memory you can assign. So that's also needs to be uh, make, make on your plan, how much you want. So if you create one ESXi host, you have 32, it's fine. It's not an issue. So you can say, okay, I'm going to distribute 32 divided by five. No, that's not true. You can assign for each ESXi, you can assign 32. Not that's not an issue. That's not an issue because you are assigning for the SXA host, but the SXA host not going to utilize all 32 at a time. So actually, it's not going to be wise to have the maximum one. So at least you can say 24. 24 BCPU for each, 24 CPU for each, and how much the memory? So what's the total capacity of your memory? In here, you have how much? I have 192. In here, I have 192. But this one, I have only 128. So this one has 192. This one has 192. So 192, I can assign for each ESXi at least. Um, because I'm going to, for dear, dear host, I'm going to host here. So I'm going to host two. But in your case, you're going to host all five in here, right? So all five in here, right? One of the hosts, right? Any one of the hosts, because you will have only one host. So how many, mem how much memory? Say for example, you have 192, just an example, 192, or 120, just say 120, this, is this one, 128. So how much you gonna assign memory, as a memory? So you have, you wanna assign for five, right? So you should assign five, for, for each machine, you should assign at least 60, 64, at least 64 gigabyte of memory. So you want to think, okay, if I assign 64, then if I, I assign for two hosts, like two BM, yes, nested ESXi BM, if I assign 64 and 64, then my capacity will all, all, already going to be finished, right? 128, how are you going to send for other three? Yes, you can, because this is the beauty of BM or bare metal hypervisor, because you are assigning for the BM, but the BM is not going to utilize the same time. That's why you will be able to assign the same. You can over configure. So you totally 120, but you can do more than 300 something like this, because all of the ESX are not going to utilize memory at the same time. So you can do that. I'm going to do the same way. So CPU minimum, uh, you can say 64 CPU, 64, okay, and also uh, 64 memory for each BM. So what do you wanna do? What do you wanna do? As a memory, memory means RAM, right? Memory assign how much? 64 GB for each nested ESXi. And CPU, how, how, how many CPU? So CPU will be 64 also. 64 CPU. So oh, 64 CPU. So 64 CPU, how are we going to distribute 64 CPU? Because you have eight. Um, uh, Oh, sorry, not 64 CPU. Is it 64? No, it's total 32, right? So you can assign 32, exactly, exactly. You can assign 32 CPU, but 32 CPU, right? But how are you gonna distribute it? So you have maximum 16 logical, right? 16 logical core. So you can say 16 times 
16 times two. That should be your actual configuration. Or what you can do, I think that will be the best configuration. Don't go over, as I said, 16 and eight times two. That will be the correct configuration. All right. Uh, okay, no, actually you can go more, 32. 32 and 16 times two. All right. That means 16 core with two socket. So each, each, each host you can configure like this. Each host you can configure like this, each host. Each host you can configure like this for each host, for each host, for each host, for each host. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, let's start it. So you're gonna create five machine on one host. I'm going to distribute it, right? So based on my plan, based on my plan, I'm going to the second one here. And this is my host name. I'm going to copy. And in here, I'm going to create a virtual machine. Okay, before I create the virtual machine, I need one more thing, one more thing I need. So I want, if you go to the host and go to the configuration and go to the virtual switch, you know, see here, there's a switch. So I have uh, one ICAR attached with um, standard switch one, and it has three port, one BMNet, iSCSI SAN, and BMotion, right? And so that means BMotion traffic and iSCSI SAN traffic will go through this because actually I supposed to add two NIC card here, but I'm, I don't have it. And I'm going to create a distributed switch. So distribute, I'm going to create a distributed switch but you guys don't know actually what is the distributed switch. So I, I, I'm going to introduce you, but it's not mandatory. You have to have a distributed switch. If you have only one host, you can create, uh, you can add, you can add, a, you can add a network adapter here. Just say add new adapter and you can say um, virtual machine port group, I click next and you can use the same one, click next and you can say um, BM. Uh, nested ESXi, nested ESXi net or something, whatever. It's, it's, it's not like you have to have, so if you want to create a port group in a standard switch, so you have to create like this and click next and finish. So, and also another thing is go back, billion ID. So if you have some billion created, I have a billion created, because I have a different network here. See for net New York, I have a different billion, NY billion 90, then the IP will be different. IP will be completely different. My primary side IP is 192.168.1.1, and my NY side IP is 10.15.90.0 slash 24 subnet. It's completely different, right? If in your case, if you have it, you can do that. So you can add it here, the billion ID, based on that you can do that with the standard switch. So the, the only one I can show, I want to show you here. So it's a common, so you created this one, right? And if you go to the VM network, it's by default, if you go here, the security. Security is all the time is reject, um, by default it's like rejected, accept or accept, whatever. I don't care, it's, but security wise, everything should be rejected. But the only thing is, the only thing is, See next to the second, right? This one, go to the edit option. And only thing is the security is supposed to be a promiscuous mode you need to be enabled, accept. And, and this one, this needs to be accept. Otherwise, you cannot have a communication. You don't have a communication with other network or your internal network, right? So that's why you should, you have to accept do two things, the forget transmit and promise case mode, both you need to be accept and click okay. 
That's what you need to do. But I'm not doing with this. I'm going to delete it. So whenever I create the virtual machine, I'm going to send on this one. I'm going to send on here. So right click on it, create a new virtual machine. Okay, actually I, I, I plan to have a distributed switch, but I'm not, I'm not doing that now because you guys are gonna be confused. I'll create a complete separate video for implementing distributed switch. So distributed switch means right now I have this code group here, right? But I don't have code group here, right? If I want to create, I have to create separately for all three. It's three times. But if I have a this is, uh, so, um, uh, distributed switch, in that case, I don't need to do that. Anyway, I'll have a separate video for distributed switch because it's you like I need to explain like um, in depth of uh, networking site like why you need standard switch, why you need uh, distributed switch. But for now. And in here, standard switch, you don't need to be audited because you have only one host, right? But I need to be audited. I have three hosts. So I have to create three times. But in your case, it's just only one time, right? So I'm going to go edit and just copy the name because I need the same name for all. And okay. Actually, what do you know? Um, so this host, I need the same thing, right? Why I have here two. Oh, how come before I have two? Okay. Okay. <laughs> So in here, I need one. So I can create it here, add network, virtual, full group next, and existing, and just, I'm, I copied already, hit next, and finish. But one thing I have to make sure what? I have to click here, three dot, already it, and I have to make sure the security, uh, override this, accept, accept, all right, this one is accept and okay. So this one, okay, right? And here I have to create the same thing. Add a network, send a port group, click next. I can use the existing BM port group, but that port group, if I change it, it's gonna be changed for all other. I don't want to mess up with other virtual machine just for this. This port group is dedicatedly assigned for nested ESX, right? So I'm not doing anything. I, I just directly say switch, existing switch, okay, click next and then this and then click next and finish. So now I have created in all three hosts, but in your case, you just have one host, right? But I'm just giving an example. If you have multiple hosts, you have to do, and also if you want to create a port in a, as a, um, inside a standard switch, you have to create for each and every host individually. So if you have a 50 host, you have to create 50 times. That's why distributed switch is very easy. You just create one time and apply for all, that's it. Again, I'm gonna make a different video for a distributed switch, but I want to make sure I have everything correctly. Okay, T dot edit and security. And in here, accept this one, accept. Okay, and okay, all right. And also I need another port group here. For what? For what? Because I wanna add, because I wanna add, uh, okay, in here, same thing. So I'm going to create another port group here, add a port group. Virtual machine port group, click next, click next. And here I can say, uh, NY nested, NY nested or something, whatever, NY nested. Actually I should do it, be BY nested and NY nested, that's more makes sense. Okay, anyway, so this one, I'm going to put it, uh, the billion ID, ID, click next. 
and finish. Okay. So I have a plan. I want to make this host. One of the one of the host is here, and the host is here, right? So that's why I'm going with my plan. But if you don't need. You're gonna create both together. Both port group. You're gonna uh, create on the one host only. But in my case, I have to create on all three hosts. Add. Actually, not all three. The next one I'm going to create on the two hosts because I'm gonna build two actually XSA on NY side my different uh, remote side. This, this one is 90, right? And next, and finish. But what I missed, I missed here, the nested uh, security. Security is all the time I said, except, but you shouldn't do the except on your, uh, uh, enterprise level environment because it's security was not secure. And for just for our home lab, I'm enabling this. I believe I make you guys understand. In reality, in the enterprise level, the security and promiscuous mode, MAC address change and forget transmit is all three supposed to be rejected. Okay. So I'm going to create now. My environment is ready. So new virtual machine is going to be a create a new virtual machine. And what's the virtual machine name? So I have a machine name here, right? Based on my plan. So this is the machine name host ba zero one. Okay. So I'm going to create, I'm going to create a host BA01 here. Host BA01, this is my ESXA host name. And then what is the data store? So is this a data center? Next. In your case, you're gonna select only because you will have only one host. But in my case, I have three, that's why I'm selecting one by one. Click next. Okay. Why I'm gonna put this ESXA on the local data store? This whole local data store. Because I have plenty of space here. Click next. Okay, go back. What? Okay, I'm looking. Click next. Okay, compatibility level. You can you can downgrade if you think you have uh, your environment. You have a six point five also, and you want to move the machine. In that case, you can use this one. But I'm going, not going to change this one. Click next and West family is the other. You have to select other because you say ESXi, nested ESXi. And then I'm going for, looking for ESXi. So ESXi 6.5 or later. <laughs> Click next. All right. So the CPU, you guys remember how, how many CPUs we are planning? Because yeah, what is the maximum is, that's fine. What is the maximum? Maximum is 32. Or you can do what? 24, just, just for safe side. Or maybe you can say 32. Okay, it's fine, 32. 32 is fine, whatever we plan already, right? So socket to 16 is, is the wrong, right? It should be 16 times two socket. And hot plug is enabled. So what how we, I, I come up with this because based on my based on my CPU, like we have two socket CPU, right? With 16 logical core, actually. Logical core is eight. Physical core is eight, but logical core is 16 because hyper threading is enabled, that's why. And you make sure you enable hot plug. And hardware virtualization for creating, for creating an ESXi, this is very important. This is very, but note it down. This is very important. If you want to do a nested ESXi, make sure you enable this one. Expose hardware assist virtualization to the cast OS. And memory, how much memory we are looking for? How much memory? So the max memory we are going to 64, right? 64. And also memory hot plug is enabled. So if you need more memory, you can assign more memory. 
on the fly. Memory hot plug means on the fly. Without shut it down, you can increase it. So hard disk. How much hard disk I need? 40 gigabyte by default, I that's enough. That's enough for me. But what I'm going to do, uh, storage, location, right? Browse, where I'm going to put it? On this data source, the local data source, right? But uh, how is that not thick provisioning, thin provisioning? And Okay, so now what I do, I need to do, this is just only one hard drive, right? So I need more hard drive. I need what? More hard disk, right? You, based on our plan, based on our plan, I need two more hard disk. So one is 100 and this is 900, right? Based on my plan. So I'm going to add, post USB drive, uh, hard disk. So hard disk, so new, this is the new hard disk, right? This one is, I already assigned, okay? So this is the second hard disk, right? But this one I need 100. It, I'm gonna use it as a capacity tier, right? So, and browse storage from where? From here, this storage, not from data store. From this system, local storage. I have total 1.9 terabyte, right? Out of 1.9 terabyte, I'm going to take 100, 100 gigabyte, sorry, 100 gigabyte, and it's gonna be a thin provision. And that space I'm taking for capacity tier, right? And, okay. Plus I need more, right? Add one more hard drive, one, one more hard drive here, and it's gonna be 900, right? Based on my plan here based on my plan. So based on your plan, maybe you're gonna have 600 or maybe more than that. It's up to your total space here. You're gonna distribute like this. You, you should have this kind of plan. Okay, so 900 gigabyte. But from where? From where you want 900? So if you go to the store, browse, and if you can select this one, okay. Now it's gonna be show okay. And then it's gonna be a thin provision. Thin provision, right? All right. And what else you need? You need to add, you need to add. So the first network is already connected with your nested SXI. Nested SXI net in Virginia, right? It's already connected, but I need to add more. How many more? Six more, one. So this is one. Now I need to add more. So I added two more, right? Total three. So I need total seven, right? Three and four, five, six, and seven. So, and also make sure all of them has this check mark. And now I need a ISO file, ESX ISO file. So I have ESX ISO file on my NAS storage, NAS01. Uh, NAS I have ISO file here, ISO. So which ISO I need? I need a BS pair. BMR, BM Visor installer, BMR, BM Visor installer 6.7, uh, update to anyone, anyone, I can, we can uh, apply the patch, it's not an issue, okay. So I added this one and make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure, connect this one, okay. Make sure, make sure, make sure. And then all this configuration is done. So why I added three port group, I already described, right? Uh, sorry, seven network card, network port group, network adapter, why? Because, oh, one more thing. I'm in here, you see, BMX Net 3, and there is another one, E01. So BMX Net 3, because this is a Linux BM. For the Linux BM, by default, is, 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 is the network adapter type was BMX Net 3. But if you are selecting the Windows, it's gonna take E100E adapter type. So what does it mean? This one actually support 
one gig, this one can give you support with 10 gig. So, but by default, if you select to deploy any uh, Linux based VM, the adapter type automatically by default comes to BMX Net3. With BMX Net3, you will be able to transfer 10 gigabyte of data. All right. So I just explained one of the network and the reason why I have seven because two of them are gonna make a uh, uh, team, um, Nick teaming with two for, for like redundancy and two of them, um, this one I'm gonna use for ice and this one I'm gonna use for uh, Barshu, what is called? Uh, Misen and one of those I'm gonna use for uh, Dedicatedly, I'm gonna use for Bmotion, and then rest two of them I'm gonna use for I'm gonna use for uh, distributed switch. That's why I have seven. And BM option, BM option, make sure uh, your boot option is not UFEI BIOS BIOS type. And and BM tools all the time. You don't forget it. Just check check synchronize with the host. Okay, and BM tools before each power on. Now click next. So your first, your first BM deployment is done. So where's the BM is? Was B0, right? So right click on it. Now power on. And if you power on and click here immediately, immediately click here and open a console, then you're gonna see here. See here, install. And it's gonna be installed very quickly. So the same way you should create total five, but three of them, you should have this kind of storage, three storage with seven network adapter. And this one only for ESXA installation, that means one drive is enough. And, and later on, we're gonna add iSCSI SEN here. We don't need BSEN here, okay. So you're gonna build everything in one host, but I'm going to build on three hosts, right? Based on my environment. So it's loading, it's, it's gonna be pretty quick. So I'm going to create one more SXI, uh, three more, right? So in this one, I'm going to create another one. Uh, this is gonna be very quick. I'm not going to explain uh, that much. I'm just going to do it because you guys already know how to create it, right? So it's gonna be second one and click next and select my second host because it's for only for me. And I'm going to select this data store because I have enough space here. Um, seven is fine, it's next. And it's gonna be other, that means it's a Linux and also it's a VMware ESXi. Select this one, click next. And in here, expand it, change it to 32, right? You can remember, right? And it's gonna be 16 and hot CP horse and enable and hardware virtualization, make sure enable and uh, hard disk is 40 gigabyte is enough. Oh, sorry, memory. I didn't increase the memory. Memory 64, we assigned for other one. This is our plan and, and enable this one and hard disk expand it all the time, expand it all the time. Don't forget it. Okay, 40 gigabyte, but where, from where are you gonna use it? So I'm gonna use it from uh, the local data store, the, the, the one, this one, data store, zero one. And, and it's gonna be a thin provision. I'm using thin provision. And sharing, you can use thick provision, less is zero. Uh, so thin provision and thick provision, thin provision, thick provision means if I assign 40 gigabytes, so it's gonna be take 40 gigabyte and reserve 40 gigabyte for this virtual machine and it's not gonna release. But if you use thin provision, it's not gonna capture the whole 40, it's gonna, whatever the BM is using, is gonna capture just that much storage and rest of the storage is gonna release to the, uh, like a physical machine. So that's why all the time I use thin provision. But some case, some of the um, Linux appliance, is, it's not supported on thin provision. In that case, you have to use thick provision, lazy zero or eagle zero. For, uh, for fault tolerance machine, if you implement any fault tolerance machine, in that case, you need thick provision. Otherwise you don't need. All right. So where we are right now, so we have already this, we have, 
40 gigabyte thin provision and we need more hard drive right add more hard drive okay i just added one of them and how much is 100 right and from where i need this storage browse and i need from here right okay and it's going to be a thin provision right 100 gigabyte thin provision everything i did make sure make sure make sure make sure okay and i need one more hard disk right hard disk with 900 900 but it's going to be because by default is taking from the data store one but and that's one doesn't have that much storage. that's why it's showing red but you have need to expand expand it and go to the store with virtual machine location so click here click here then you want to get the browser from go to browse and select the you your your hard drive here oh, something goes wrong why i'm not able to select this oh it's frozen just give me a second let me see All right, so I'm not sure something goes wrong. Okay, so actually I had some um, uh, Wi-Fi network issues. That's why I was disconnect. So anyway, um, so this is the drive I'm going to select. It okay. So now it's 900 is okay, right? And it's gonna be thin provision, right? And go down. All right, so now what else I need to do? I need to add network adapter, right? I have only one. So I have I had to add six more. Add network adapter. So two, total two, right? Then three, four, five, six, seven. I don't need any more, right? It's done. And then what I need, CD, DVD, right? So browse, data store, ISO, and NAS01. And on, under the NAS01, we have ISO here. And you can expand it. But how I have this one, you have to upload it to the data store first before you do that. So you need an ISO file on your data store. So this is. This is our uh, my, my NAS storage. But if you don't have NAS storage, you can, on the local data store, you can upload the file because previously I showed you guys how to upload a file to the data store, right? This is how you're gonna, you will have your, uh, this ISO file. So I have, I have already update, uh, uploaded there. That's why I'm able to attach it. So select this one, 6.7, and make sure you connect with this one and all right, all right. So from this one is good up to here, and then BM options. From the BM options, make sure BM tools, this and this and all the time. You have check mark, and also for boot option, make sure you have BIOS, BIOS firmware, and then click next, and that's it. So second one, right? Or on the second one. And immediately click here and open web UI. You wanna see it's installer. Okay, so it's installing and this one is already ready. This one is ready. And I'm going to create my third one, right? So what's, oh, I'm going to create my third one on my third host. But you wanna create on the same host, right? So on the third host, I'm going to create very quickly. Next. It's gonna be number three, and then this data center, and then number host number three, and this data store, click next. Next. Now I'm not going to explain anymore because you guys already know what I need to do. And click next. And in here, CPU, I need total 32. And here, this one will be 16. 16, enable, and make sure, expose hardware, virtualization. Okay, 
and then memory should be 64, right? And uh, go down, hot plug enable, and hard disk is 40 GB, I know which one I'm using, but make sure it's thin provision and storage. We already selected, but again, just for make sure data store, the one we have for the USXI. And make sure you change it to thin provision. And, 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 okay. So I need more data store, right? Two more data store. Add a hard disk. So hard disk is here. I need, this one is 100 for capacity tier, right? You guys remember? Capacity tier for this one and browse. From where? From my this 1.6 terabyte, this one, from my this storage, okay? Click OK. And thin provision. Okay. And 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 and, and then one more hard disk. And this one will be 900, but it's gonna be red because we have to change it to higher browse this data store. Now it's gonna be normal, okay. And it's gonna be thin provision. That's it, right? Now, network adapter, right? So how many network adapter I need? Seven, I have one already, right? So add network adapter, so number two adapter. Now, three adapter, now, four adapter, now, five adapter, now, six adapter, now, seven adapter. Okay, you have seven, right? All right, so you have already, click next. Oh, sorry, uh, you have to have CD-ROM, right? Browse, also not this one, data store. And from the data store, you know already where it is, right? So it's an ISO and which ISO file, we know which one we need. Uh, this one, right? PSPR VM Visor Installer 6.7, update two. This one is pretty old, but anyway, we can upgrade, no problem. That's how we can learn actually how to apply the paths, right? So we connected the data store, we have the network, we have the hard drive, everything we have, and only one thing is we have to change here two things. VMR tools, make sure this and this, and, and what? Good option. Make sure it's BIOS and click next and finish. Okay, anyway, somehow I'm getting uh, network issues. All right, so look like it's ready, right? And finish. Okay, so I have number three host, right? I'm going to power on the host. So it's exactly the same thing, whatever we did for a physical host through the iDirect. So if you click here and go launch it, and you're gonna, okay. Oh, what happened? It's going to close the window, okay. Okay, no, no issues. So we have to power off this one. Power off, yes. And let's see, go to the edit option. Let's see what mistake we did. Uh, most probably CD-ROM is not connected. Do you see here, CD-ROM? Oh, it's connected. Why? Actually, I'm having some network issues. Everything looks good, right? It's connected. Okay. Let's power on. Let's power on. Okay. And the console has been disconnected. Close the window and relaunch the console, reconnect. Okay. Okay, I'm going to close everything. I'm going to close everything, relaunch it. So B center, right? B center. And
All right, so now we are going to open all of the uh, SXI, nested SXI VM. We're just going to launch on the browser and we're gonna see what we need to do, right? So open, oh, sorry, not this one, not this way. Uh, just click and then okay. So host three. So host number one, this is the host number one. It says the exactly same thing, whatever we did for a physical machine through the uh, iDirect or iLo, right? The same thing, same interface. So it's loaded everything. Uh, in here it's loaded pretty fast because I'm doing on the uh, master DSX side, but on the physical server, it will take a little bit time, but not, not that much. Okay, so hit enter. Make sure you, you select this screen, then hit enter. Otherwise it's not gonna take the command. F11, F11. And if you work with from your laptop, then may, when you click F11, make sure you click Fn button from your keyboard. All right, Fn plus F11 for you, if you use the uh, laptop, but I'm using external keyboard, external keyboard. So for the external keyboard I have, I'll just, I can directly click F11. All right, uh, so, so the first one we reserve for is success instruction, right? So if you enter and then use default, and password, whatever the common password is. Okay. And again, okay, it matches, hit enter. And F11 for installation, F11 installation. So it's going to be installed very quickly, done. And then here, this is the second host, right? Host B02, hit enter, hit F11. So on an SD6 side, it's pretty quick, it's pretty quick. Just the planning is really tough to make a plan. Um, root password. And F11, it's installed, right? Then the third one, hit enter, F11. Enter default uh, root password. F eleven for install. Okay, so I believe all those are done. So whenever you have done, it says remove this installation media before rebooting. So it's gonna automatically, if it is a physical host, if you attach a virtual CD-ROM through the iDRAC or ILO, it's gonna disconnect the ILO virtual media automatically when you hit enter report. And if it is a if you insert a physical CD into the physical machine, the CD-ROM gonna be come out automatically. But this one is completely different because this one is, uh, ISO attach, right? So we need to go edit and go to the edit settings and we need to actually, um, we need to remove this one or maybe we need to uncheck this one. But anyway, now BMR has options. It's automatically disconnect this one. Let's see how it's, uh, how, how it's gonna work. Okay, hit enter reboot. Okay, I'm going to reboot, right? So check now first one. Next one, check the first one. They did. Still it has a check mark, right? Okay, it's supposed to be unchecked automatically. Let's see. If it is not, then we have to do it manually. So it's loading, reloading again. Let's check here. Is it reloading from SX again? Just booting ESX again. Let's see. Yeah, see, it's automatically disconnected. So it's not, it's not booting from the ISO again. So it's already disconnected. So it's better to remove this one is from the host or client device or host device, whatever you want. It's a client device or host device, whatever you want, just okay. 
Okay, anyway, this one, it enter for reboot. And I believe this one is also done. It enter for reboot. So it's pretty easy to install. So uh, we have already three SX installed. Now it's loading and we have to assign the IP address. Now I'm working on my another two SXI on my wire, on my um, NYB center, like remote, remote data center. And it's, it has a complete different subnet, right? So how are we gonna configure that one? Uh, let me, okay. So I have a plan to create here, right? So based on my plan, I'm going to copy the host name. This and host NY01, right? Copy. And I'm going to here, right click on it. So, but you're gonna do on the same machine, right? In my case, I have three. That's why I'm just divided in, um, dividing to the other host. And based on my resource, I'm trying to figure out actually where I'm supposed to put the my the last two two nested SXA hosts, right? New, and then click next, and this one, and Y, right? And in here, click next. And this data store, I have plenty of space so I can use this one for installation of my SXI. So everything is fine, click next. And in here, I need to select uh, other. Then from here, I can find out memory SXI and click next because this is gonna be an SXI operating system, right? It's an SLD SXI, that's why. So CPU, again, how much CPU you're gonna assign? Yeah. You can say the same 32 or maybe do it less than say, say, say 24. I'm just doing a little bit different, okay? So 12 and times two, right? And enable, that's the right configuration, right? We have only two socket, physical socket, right? And make sure expose hardware assisted virtualization to the gas OS and Memory 64 and here. Make sure you enable this one, hard plug. And hard disk is how much? How much the hard disk? So 40 is fine, right? Oh, one more thing. The network for that disaster recovery is all different location. I'm going to change it because you guys remember I created a different port group and why you have a billion different billion here. So this one you need to add and okay. But I need more to hard or oh, I don't need anything. For this one, I don't need any more hardware because I'm not going to implement BSEN here, right? So I just need a installation, that's it. And But I need seven network adapter. Add one more network adapter. There's gonna be two, but make sure you change it to Nested, uh, NY nested, and then add one more. I'm going to add more. I'm going to add, add more. So how many? Four, right? I need three more. So four, five, and six, and seven. So I need to change all of them to NY nested and browse and when instead 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 okay all right it's a lot of work right so the other store uh, I know NS1, NS1, ISO file, and which one we are looking for? 6.7, update two, and make sure I have a check mark on it, right? Okay. And this one, the storage is, okay, here, thin provision, okay? And click, oh, sorry. BM option, make sure, BMR tools. 
uh, what requirement tools? Enable, enable, and hardware. Oh, sorry. Okay. In here, another one is boot option is instead of UF, yeah, EFI, we have to select uh, BIOS, click next, and that's it. So I need one more. I'm going to create one more here, right? I click on it, new, and new virtual machine, and based on my plan, it's going to be number two. Click next. And I'm going to select this host, second number host. And I have a space to have 40 gig. So actually what we're going to do, uh, other, uh, other, 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 and here I should have the 65 point letter. Yeah, that's fine. Click next and CPU, expand it. So for this one, this is the recovery side, I'm going, I'm going to assign 24, right? You remember for the last one I did with 24, 12 times two and enable and uh, memory is 64. And uh, by make sure you enable this one and hard disk. I don't think actually 40, 20 is fine. I'm just changing thick provisioning, thin provisioning, and and what else? And this this one should be nested, okay. And add six more, right? Network two, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, sorry, I don't need it. Seven is fine. So I'm going to cancel one. So browse nested, okay. So two browse nested is three nested browse and Y, which is four, five, six, seven, right? Browse nested, okay, browse, nested, okay, and browse, nested, okay, and client device, the yeah, store ISO, and NAS storage, ISO folder, and from there you have to select 6.7 of the two, this one, and make sure you have check mark on it. Okay. And everything done here. And only one thing I need VM options, VM tools, enable, enable, and boot options instead of EFI BIOS. Click next and finish. Okay. So I have two more. Post is ready with the CD-ROM attached, right? So I just need to power on. When you power on, it's going to start booting. And from there, you need to open this window like this. And you can see here, in hit enter, install, so it's loading the SXI. That's the way you can install the SXI, right? Now, I have one more host here. I'm going to install the same way, power on. Hmm. Want to loop power on fail means okay. Let me check actually what is saying. Nested, nested, nested. Let us try so. It shouldn't be seven inches, okay. Power machine machine, okay. I'm not sure what, what it mean. Okay, anyway, let's see what it shows here, this one. And all those machines has the DSCP IP, right? DSC, all those machines has a DSCP IP, but 
we want to have our own IP address based on our plan, right? So what is our plan? What is our plan? For HB, starting for 14, this one management for is 15, for host number three, B host number three, management should be 16, right? Based on our plan, based on our plan, okay? And what else do you need to do? Okay, all right, so I have all, I have all. Okay, this one is also done, hit enter, F11, right? And this, and password. So F11 install. So it's gonna be pretty quick. And after that, we have to configure, we have to assign the IP address. But I'm not sure why it's not powering on. What's wrong with this one? Edit, okay, let's do one thing. Say, uh, what's going on? Oh, yeah, I forget one more thing, one more thing. What does CPU, did I, oh, I exposed virtualization. I didn't do that. I have to do that, okay. And what else? What else I need to do? For disk. So I did really quickly, that's why maybe I missed something. Everything is okay. What was going on? Okay, all right. This one is done, right? I just need to reboot it. And then it's gonna be disconnect. Ah, okay. So what I need to do, uh, I'm, I'm trying again this one. I'm not sure what's going on. Ooh. The power on virtual machine, host and Y02. What does it mean? So seems like for this machine uh, over Oh, bulk committed, okay. So host, this one, I'm going to edit, 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 edit. So hard drive, why not 10? Okay, let's do one thing. So delete this one, okay. Delete from the data store, okay. Okay, I just deleted. And I'm going to edit, So add a data store, hard disk, for a gig, it's fine, or 20 gig is fine. Okay, so 20 gig. And I'm gonna take it from, not here. Uh, I'm gonna take it from, well, because I have a plenty of space here. So, Okay, so I believe now I can power on the machine. Oh. 
one virtual machine, module, module loop. Okay, why it is happening again and again? So it is. F for T because the other one doesn't have any issues because you, you see here, I have plenty of space and CPU. Okay, how about make it like less CPU? Say 16 and make it eight. Because the others, I built the same thing on the first number one, it should work. It should work, but I'm not sure why it's Give me a hard time. So how many hard disk? Okay. So I believe my this one is also ready. You see here, what's the IP address is? Kind of 15.90, it's not, it's not, 90, okay, let's show you one thing. For New York one, first the IP is found. So 10.15.90, right? But this one, what I got? Now 192.168, so it's just completely different IP. Okay. Because I assigned VLAN. So how are you gonna get the that VLAN? Your network team will provide you the VLAN. Okay, so this one, this one. So if I am able to create, if you go here, you're gonna see two BM. If I'm able to create a two BM here, I supposed to do the same here too, because same resource. I'm not sure why it's creating the problem. You did all the edit option, CPU, CPU hot plug, okay. Suppose memory 64, hot plug enable, okay. Data store ISO, that's fine. In here, what else I did? And boot option, BIOS boot, okay. Everything looks good. Everything looks good to me. So now it's working. I just deleted and recreated again. So I don't know what's going on previously. So I just deleted and just recreated, that's it. So it's loading now. And in the meantime, what we can do, we can uh, configure all of those. So I'm going to start with one by one. So how are we gonna configure it? I'm going to select this one and F2 and then root and password. Enter, I logged in, then configure password, configure management network, hit enter, network adapter is connected. I want two, uh, two, like make a redundant. So that's called a proper configuration and build in, I wanna use 4095 for allowing all the billions here. You see here, 4095, 4095, hit enter and go okay. And IPv4 configuration. And so now this one, click space bar, press the space bar and then go down with your uh, keyboard arrow and right arrow and then just backspace, remove. And based on the plan is should I think 14, right? Let's see, 14, 15, 16, right? 
So based on the plan, 14, and this is 255, that's fine, that's fine, okay? And now IPv6 is gonna be disabled, spacebar, and hit enter, and then DNS, DNS is use space, the second one, and the DNS server is, is we have a DNS server, right? 192.168.1.4, I believe, right? This is our DNS server. And also we can check here. What is our DNS? 014.1.4. And the second one we're gonna create here, but it's not exist yet, but we're gonna create this one. 90.4, right? In the different data center. And my data center. So that's what we can mention here. It's not an issue. That should be. So primary this one and the secondary should be 192.168. Sorry. 10 dot actual 10 dot 15 dot 0 dot 4 and local host is uh host name is what's the host name host ba01 right hyc host v ba01 host, host ba01 that's it hit enter and then the custom dns is uh, els.com right okay and then escape bar and it's gonna ask you for reboot and yes, Y. So you press Y and it's gonna be reboot. So do the same thing on host number two. I'm going to escape bar and then F2 and then put the password. So I'm going to do it very quickly. As you, know, as you guys know already, uh, the same type of configuration, right? So network adapter, Yes, I need two adapter to make it redundant or teaming. And then hit enter and VLAN. So it's, this is the management management network. And this console is called DCUA, Direct User Control Interface. So you can get this interface. Right now I'm getting through the um, browser, which is UI, or maybe BSFair, you can say BSFair web client. But Actually, you're supposed to get it to the browser. That's true, but you are you gonna you should get it through KBM or maybe you can should get it from the ILO or I, I whatever the server is or maybe IPMI. Okay, so uh, four zero nine five, hit enter, and then IPv four, go down spacebar and then right arrow, remove the last one, and we know it's fifteen, right? And then hit enter and IPv6, we, uh, we need to disable it, spacebar and hit enter. And then DNS configuration, hit enter and go to the second option is spacebar, like this one. We know the IP number four is our DFS DNS server and alternate one is not exist yet, but we're gonna create it, right? So that's the 10 dot, 15 dot, 90 dot four. That's gonna be okay. And this is the host BA02. Enter and DNS is um, ELS.com. Hit enter. Okay, and then spacebar, yeah, escape and Y for yes, it's gonna be reboot. Okay, shortly. And this one. Okay. Okay. Before I do that, I'm going to do this host because it's already loaded. Hit enter, F11. I'm going to install the SXI here. And it's gonna show me, it's gonna be pretty quick. So enter, default. I have 11, now it's installing. So I'm going here again, uh, no, host number three, right? So F2 and okay. All right. So configuration management network, network adapter. I'm selecting two because to making it teaming or redundancy and then hit enter. I select two nickel, right, for the management. And then VLAN, 
make sure all of the time allow all the billions four zero nine five and hit enter hit enter and then ipv4 configuration so this one will be sorry space bar and then down arrow and then left uh, right arrow remove okay this is going to be 16 right 14 15 16 let's see again it's going to be 16 right here 14 15 16 okay that's correct and submit mask and default guard is okay hit enter and IPv6 is going to be disabled, hit enter, and the DNS, and spacebar, and here, right arrow, remove with the back, and then it's going to be 4, and down arrow, is going to be 10.15.90.4, that one is not exist yet, but we're going to create it later on, and ELS.com, right, is the domain name, hit enter, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. it's not the domain name. It's a uh, host name. So host name is host ba03, right? Host ba03, hit enter, and then the DNS is ELS.com. Okay, hit enter and skip. So DNS suffixes your domain name. It's my domain name is ELS.com. That's why I put ELS.com, but you, you should put your domain name. I'm not sure what your domain name is, right? So whatever your domain name, just put it there. And it yes, I want to reboot. It's been to reboot and let's check this one status. It's already booted and IP number is 14. That's good. This one is already booted. It's IP number is 15. And this one is booting now. In progress, it's starting in progress. And this one I need to, okay. So before I do this one, I configure this one. Uh, this one I need to be reboot, hit enter. So in the meantime, it's gonna be ready, okay? So host, NY host 01, F2, and password. Okay, enter. And configuration password. I don't need management network. I know network adapter. And so it is okay. Hit enter to VLAN uh, ID. And we know same thing for all hosts. It's the same, same configuration, same way. And then IPv4, we're gonna want seven aesthetic IP. So down arrow and then left arrow, uh, sorry, right arrow, and then remove with the backspace. And what's the IP plan we make? What's the IP should be here for NY? Uh, is the 14 and 15, okay? So 14 and 15, it's 14, okay? And this one is fine because it's 24 subnet, this one also fine, it's default gateway. And the uh, IPv6, when it is able, hit enter. And the DNS configuration, spacebar select, and then primary DNS server is one is fine. And then the secondary one is, 10.15.0. What? 10.15.0.4. Oh, sorry. The first one should be also four, right? Primary DNS and alternate DNS. And the host name is this one is a little different. It's a host NY. Host NY01, right? Host NY01. Okay. And then DNS is same ELS dot com DNS suffix dot com okay and skip bar and hit Y so it's going to be reboot right now it's still starting and now this one the last one finally F two so the screen we are working right now that's called DCUI, Direct User Control Interface, and that's for configuring your ESXi. Hit enter. Network, network adapter, select another one, yes, spacebar, that's how we can select. Hit enter. And down arrow, VLAN, VLAN ID 4095, the same thing for all. And 
IPv4, go down, spacebar, and then down arrow, and then right arrow, and then backspace with the move. And we know this one will be, so first one is 14, that one is 15, right? It's 15. Zero and one is just fine. And then uh, IPv6 is disabled and hit enter. And DNS, down arrow, select DNS server. And the DNS, primary DNS is dot four. And alternate DNS is, oh, sorry. Yeah, 10.15.90.4. And host name is NY, sorry, host NY, host NY02. And, and then DNS, sorry, ELS.com, ELS.com, Y. Okay, so it's also going to be restart. And this one is ready, 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 right? So now I need one more thing, which is I'm going to create a host a record. So this is my active directory. Okay, in my active directory, if I need to go to the, oh, not so, sorry, sorry, not active directory, DNS server. Which one is my DNS? This is my DNS server. I'm going to, I need to log into the my DNS server and I need to create a host a record for all of my SXA host. <sighs> okay. So, uh, okay. Yes, it's gonna take time. Uh, this is my DNS, uh, DNS manager, okay? So in here, for a lookup zone and reverse lookup zone, right? right? So in here, you see 19.50.10, I already added that zone, but if you don't have it, if you are, this is a completely different zone. So if you network team said, okay, your VLAN is 90 and if this should be your subnet. Uh, so based on your subnet, you're gonna, Create a reserve lookup zone. I'm going to show you how you can create a look at the reverse lookup zone. So new zone, next primary zone, IPv4 lookup, and then in here you can say 10 dot 15 dot 90 instead of 80 or something, whatever you and then click next, next, next. That's it. Click next, click next, and shh. select this one, click next, and finish. You're gonna see here. That's how you're gonna click, you're gonna create. So I'm going to delete it because I don't need it. Okay, so I need this one, it's already there. All right, so in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create host a record. So how you don't create a host record, I'm first ELS, I click on it, for new host a record, and first host name is host VA01, right? Host VA01, and IP is, 192.168.1.14, right? Add. So it's going to add also a host a record here, pointer. And now the second record, two. See here, it's a fully qualified one, host VA202. And the IP address is 192.168.1.15, right? And also it's creating a host a record. If you don't have check mark here, you may make sure you have a check mark here. Add host, okay. Now the third one, three, and 192.168.1.16, add. All right, now I need to host, and instead of BA, I'm gonna add NY, right, NY. I'm going to copy this one, and then 10.15.90.14, add, okay, then, Number two host, NY, host NY02, and IP number is 10.15.90.16, oh no, sorry, not 16, 15. Add, okay. 
so far I have all the host error code for all of my five years XI refresh. And let's check here. Is it created? Okay, yeah. You see here, uh, host BA 010203 is a pointer record. It's created here, 14, 15, 16. Plus, if you go here, if you refresh, you're going to see uh, 14 and 15 pointer records for other ESX host. So the DNS is working perfectly, and you can ping it. Uh, you can run NS lookup. And also, based on our plan, see here, what's our plan? So our plan is to create a host, uh, what is called uh, cluster, right? So I'm going to create the cluster now. I'm just going to add the host and I'm gonna create the cluster. Okay, this one. So I'm not gonna be enable the whole, all the features for the cluster, but I'm just mentioning lab host cluster. And so, Okay, sorry, lab HA cluster, BA lab HA cluster, and why that? So lab HA cluster, BA. So I'm going, to, going back to my B center. Okay, this is my B center, right? Okay, so I'm under this data center, in the same data center I'm going to, because I don't want to use, if you want, you can use second, like a different data center, that's fine, completely fine. But I want to do it in the same data center. Okay, new cluster. What's the cluster name? BA. DRS, HA, BCN, none of them I'm, uh, I'm not going to enable right now because I'm going to configure it later on. Okay. I just created it. I'm just going to create a uh, cluster. And then I'm going to create another cluster based on my um, our plan, right? BA and lab HA cluster NY. Copy and here under this data center. New. If you want, you can have a different data center. That's not an issue. Okay. Mm, okay, just do one thing because you, you guys are gonna be confused. I'm going to do it here. Add a new data center, under the different data center, different cluster, different data center, okay? Okay. So you can say, uh, okay, I'm going to re uh, rename it. Uh, rename, you can say NY. data center, and why hyphen data center, then it's gonna be more organized. And this one will be, uh, I'm going to rename it to BA, just meaningful name, nothing else. Whatever you want, it's gonna, it's gonna work, okay? So in here, this cluster, I want to add at the host, well, with the, what is the host address or FQDN? So we have host ba01 dot ELS dot com, right? I'm going to copy this one. And I know everything is root, right? Root. Okay. And then the second one, And the third one, number three, right? You can add all together. But most probably, I'm going to face problem. What kind of problem? If the time server is not configured, if the timing is different, then you will you'll have problem to add the host. And also, there's another problem can be happen uh, based on the adapter security. So let's see. Okay, click next. All right, the certificate allow all, okay. 
It shows everything. Okay, click next, click finish. I'm not sure. Look like there will not be any issues. Look like. So first time it's gonna show you disconnected, then it's gonna be under maintenance, and then you have, it's gonna be work. Okay, look like it's working fine. Okay, all right. All three is working fine. Okay, okay. See here, all our maintenance mode. So you just need to right click on it and you can say exit maintenance mode. In here, you can say exit maintenance mode. And here you can say exit maintenance mode. Okay. So data store, is there any data store? Yeah, just the local one, a little bit of space. Not that much, okay. And lab and Y. So in here, I'm gonna add, add the host, the NY data, so which is, uh, not H, is this, uh, NY, right? NY, ELS, you can have the fully qualified domain name of your ESX host, or you can assign an IP address here, the host IP address. So is it root and password? And the same thing here, you can have two, you can say root, and you can say, click next, select all, click okay, next, and finish. So we have already created our nested ESX environment look like now all those are physical, right? Look like it's all our physical, right? What's going on? It's just showing one, one host. <laughs> Where's the other host? Strange. I have added two hosts, right? Okay. All right. So two hosts is here, all right. So look like I have, this is this one is physical, this one is physical, right? It's N white, HA cluster N Y, HA cluster N Y, B A. Uh, actually the name not, you're not gonna see like this. It's gonna be different based on your company's naming convention. Um, so that's, that's your plan. You have to make plan with the naming convention, standard naming convention. All right, so we have this and this. Uh, now we need to configure. Now we need to configure that. BSAN and also add the data store. So I'm going to show you shortly with all of the host. Okay, but if you want to do that, you need to do something. So so for BSAN configuration, for BSAN, you have to have it another adapter here. So let's see what kind of adapter we have here. So it's man is man. So for BSAN, so actually I want to introduce here uh, distributed switch. Actually if, because I, otherwise I have to create a, uh, code group for each and every individual machine, which will consume my time. Should I do that? Okay, let's, let's do it 
let, let's do it um, distributed switch. So for distributed switch, what do you need to do? Nothing. What do you need to do? Nothing. Just create a distributed switch under your data center. So this is your data, okay. Oh. Ah, this is not a data center. This is the data center. This is a separate folder. This is not data center actually. One under one data center, we name it different to folder. Actually, I can have different data center. That's not an issue. Anyway, uh, this is just a folder. It's just a folder. So, uh, that's why I created this folder. So let's see if I can move it to here. Yeah. We name it instead of yellow data center, I can say BA hyphen data center. Okay. Actually, I didn't focus on this one. So Okay, and NY data center, I'm going to create a, actually a two data center. I'm going to create a data center, new data center, not folder. So data center name is NY hyphen D A T A C N T R. Okay. Okay. So and why host will go and why data center? Why? Okay. Anyway. If I want to delete the folder. Okay, all right. So actually I made some mistake. The, actually, I don't know, somehow previously I created a folder and under the folder, I thought that one is a data center, it's not data center. So we have two different data center, right? But now I have created already under this data center. So I'm not able to move it to the NY data center, okay. This is NY, right? NY, why I'm not going to move here? I have to put it in a maintenance mode. Okay, let's do all the host in a maintenance mode. Sometimes it's make a problem whenever you would host is running. At a maintenance mode, okay. Now let's try. Move NY. 
again so same thing okay let me check cluster okay do it under one direction it doesn't matter okay just say data center so rename it again yes data center yes data center data center can be one it's fine it's just a name nothing else all right so this one i'm going to delete it yes okay so now in this data center, I'm going to create a distributed switch. So for creating a distributed switch, you just need to right click on the data center, it's a distributed switch, new distributed switch, and you need to have a name. What should be the name? D switch. So you can say ELS. Yeah, let's D V distributed switch yellow dv switch that's it click next and ah, select the version it's a switch version so 6.6 .6, 6.7 uh, 6.5 we don't have any 6.5 so 6.7 is fine click next and configuration number of uplinks that how many it means how many nick card you going to assign so we in future if you need you can add more that's fine for now we no, it's two and put up what is enable and code group. I'm going to create, I don't need the default one. Click next and finish. So we have successfully created a distributed port group. If you come on the network under the data center, you're going to see this is the distributed port group, right? So previously what I did when I created nested this one and this one, I have to create in each and every individual machine. But right now, in here, I don't need to do that. What I need to do, what I need to do, I just need to right click, right click on here, and then distributed port group. You just need to create a port group. So I need uh, B send, I need iSCSI send, B motion, and iSCSI send, B motion, and B send port group, which is for BM kernel. So I need three BM kernel. So BM kernel means for each you need individual IP address. So I need three BM kernel. And also I need what? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. The network will be different, right? Uh, okay, actually I need five. The reason is I have two data center. I support, oh. let's do it for first um, BM, Virginia, like BA data center, okay? So distributed port group, new distributed, okay, port group. So you can say, You can say DV distributed switch high pen, and then you can say ISCSI iSCSI DV iSCSI, or you can also use BA for Virginia, or have the same name is fine. Click next. Okay, I'm not going to create it right now. I'm not going to create a port group, but I want to assign this one with all host. How I can do that? Add this distributed switch with all host. Add and manage host, okay? Add host, click next. Add host, okay. And see here, so I'll be able to add all together here like this all together here like this. But these two hosts has a different IP, right? I'm going to just uncheck this. Okay. And 
now what? New host. Okay, no, I'm not sure. Is it okay? I don't need new host. All these are fine. So it's showing my nested ESXi plus my physical and other three ESXi. That's why it's total six. Click next. And from here, which one will be the template? Okay. Host number one, yes, host two and three, two and three. Two and three, two and three, two and three. Okay. So so the other easiest way is configuring this VCM. Okay, so what you can do to create a standard, nick number two and three. This is my physical, actually physical server assign. Nick number one, and also there's also apply this uplink assignment to the rest of the host. So if you click here, all the hosts will be select that one. BMIC two. Now BMIC three and assign uplink, and what it's gonna do. Like this one and say apply all hosts, then all six hosts are going to be select. So you don't need to do individually for all others. Everything is already selected. Assign, already assigned. Click next. And now everything is showing like this, right? Um, it's asking you, do you want to migrate? If you want, you can migrate it. No, I don't want to migrate. So I'm click next. Like the BM. Oh, I don't want my BM and ready and finish. So it's already going to implement for all hosts. If you now I'm going to create a distributed port group. Sorry, not import. Right click on it, you say distribute port group, new distribute port group. You can say port group is uh, so. BM net hyphen BA. Next. And number of ports, I'll, I'll describe how many ports you are using, right? So based on your BM, how many NIC card you're using on your BM, that's what it's gonna be here. So if you have only one BM attached to one virtual machine, one, one, one NIC card, so that means eight virtual machine you can have on this. If, so you can increase it, maybe 16, 32, whatever you want. And BLAN, so we are not using any BLAN for Virginia side, you can leave it and for the NY, you can use BLAN and then you can assign the billion ID, which is 90. But right now we are not doing anything here uh, because it's on the bar side, we don't have anything, right? So click next and complete and finish. Okay, so we have just one. And now if you go back here, you see here, um, Virginia, if you click here, you're gonna see distributed switch, you have to. So now if you have any BM, it's gonna be moved here. Already assigned network is already sent. Nothing shows here because we didn't we didn't um, put any host or any uh, virtual machine here. So if you create any virtual machine, say for example right, like this, create new virtual machine. Next, um, say test BM. Click next. Next. Next, I'm just doing the default one. I'm not changing anything. I'm not changing anything. So this host is like 10 gigabyte. Okay, I'm just, just trying to show you 
and go to the browse option. And from here, you see here, you have the Mnet DA. This will switch and click next. Finish. Now you can see here, it's showing here. The same thing, if you move this machine from this host to other host, you can see the same thing. So all the hosts now have distributed switch. I don't need to create individually here, all, all. it's already there. And <clears throat> now actually I'm looking into a way how um, I sketch this end, right? Okay. For okay, in here. There's no way you can specify, it's just view. Okay. Okay, let's try with another distributed switch. Is there any port group we can create? New distributed port group. So now if I want, I can add more host, right? So for example, add a host, a new host. So I can add this to next. And this to, okay, this one assign, okay, uplink. And also this one assign uplink like this as a template, okay. So the next one I don't need because this one already assigned as a template for the host number two. And next, 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 and finish. So that, okay. So now whatever the port group is for Virginia, I know, but it's gonna be show up here too. That's the easy way. So for all kind of VM port group, we're gonna create here. And iSCSI, mm, if you need the iSCSI one, you can create it here, but you need a different uh, switch. So you can do through the different switch, right click, new, okay, I'm not new cluster, new data set. Uh, distributed switch, new distributed switch. You can say for Sam, DV or something. I'm just giving, I, I, I don't delete it. I'm just going to show you what you actually need to do. So in here, number of uplink one. I, Sam, ASC, S, Jazzy. And all right, size scary, just size scary. Click next. Finish, right? So in here, what you can do, 
with this, you can create a standard for all. What kind of standard? So right click on it. You, you, have, you have already this, right? So how are you going to assign the host in this distributed switch? New distributed switch, right? Add a host. Next. Oh, before I do that, what I need to, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to assign like this. Um, so I'm going to remove whatever I did for my physical host here. Uh, okay, leave the physical one. I don't want to touch it, actually. So what I need to do for I scaling, right? Through the distributed switch. So I'm going to add Sorry, where it is? Here. Actually, you should have meaningful name. Uh, DV distributor switch. DV, or you can say DVS distributor switch. Hyphen. This is for send, right? Send. DV switch send. Okay. And I I have here only one uplink. Why? Because because I schedule send not going to support multiple NIC card. That's why. So now add host. Next, add. Which host I need? This one, this one, right? And because this is my physical one, it has already scheduled and configured, but I can change it later on if I want to add it. So now you see here how easy. I don't need to create each and individual machine like iSCSI port group, iSCSI port group, iSCSI port group. I just gonna select the host and applying. Okay. Next. And which one? Only one NIC card, right? So four, no, number four NIC card for, for each, all, all right? So it's gonna be making standard. As an uplink and apply this one as a standard, okay. So, BMNIC number four, I assign for the, this host. So for each and every host, BMNIC four is already assigned. So I don't need to do the, like select individually. It's a template and click next, next, next and finish. So what I did, so I did a distributor switch, one distributor switch for all the BM traffic, one distributor send, Right, and I'm going to do another distributor switch. Okay. Sorry, so it's already added, right? So I'm going to create another distributor switch Right click on it, data center, data center, right click on it. Add a new distributor switch for what? I'm going to create for B motion or maybe B send, B send. So B send. And this one is distributor switch. Right? So you can say D V S hyphen V send. Click next and next. And then only one port. I'm going to assign, and this one you can say is for BSEN, right? Code group name BSEN, BSEN. Click next. Okay. And finish. Okay. So B send actually I'm gonna create on only three hosts, right? So right click on it, and you can say um, add host, add host, and which one? New host. Only. Oh, why is not showing here? Okay. B send this one. Okay. Add host. I was in wrong host. Okay, so 
uh, B cell, I'm gonna implement only my BA host, right? So this one, this one, and this one. Okay, right? And click, next. And I have two more, right? One, uh, oh, sorry, this one, number five, assign. And I wanna make it standard. So apply for all uplink and click next. So I can click next, that's okay. It already sent for all three. Next and finish, okay? And now what I need to do for the motion, but the motion for all five, yesterday is success, right? So what I'm gonna do here, next, distributor switch, new distributor switch. And I can say DVS distributor switch hyphen V motion, B M O T I one, right? V motion. And click next. Click next. And uplink is only one. And you can say B V motion. Click next and finish. So this is the third DVS distributor switch. Now I'm going to add the host. So in here I can add all host means for the motion, I'm going to add this, 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 and this. All next to SXI, click next. And I know, which one is this one? Okay, number six is empty. I didn't select five because I know already for BA five is already assigned, right? So I cannot create a template for a standard. So this one, I'm going to do like this. Six, number six, I'm going to assign it as a standard apply and okay. So all six Nick, uh, six number Nick card is assigned for the motion. I click next and finish. Okay. So if I go back here, now I have everything. But one thing I have to remember, one thing I have to remember is gonna be BM kernel. So what I have to do, I have to create a BM kernel, right? The motion edit, uh, Okay, so, oh, actually I have to create separate. I, I assign, but the motion, because the IP will be different, right? Um, Okay, so why VLAN So as you guys know, the motion uh, BSAN and iSCSI required uh, not the regular uh, port group. It's required BM kernel port group, right? Not standard port group, uh, like uh, not uh, uh, BM port group, it's, it's a BM kernel port group. So for BM kernel port group, this is what we already configured, right? So you add a BM kernel adapter, add a and select. So for BA, I'm going to do separately. Okay. Click next. Now, okay. Default, you can save the motion directly here, then you don't need to select from here. Okay, click next. And IPv4. So you have to assign three IP because three hosts, right? And where's the IP address? So we know 
we have already assigned an IP address for bmotion, right? So for bmotion, we have 34, 35, 36, right? 34, 35, 36. So 34, 35, 36, 192.168.1.34, 35, uh, 36. Okay, actually what, you know, okay, do it separately. Okay, 35, right? Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, 34, 35, 34. 34. And subject mask is 255.255.255.0, right? And then this one, see, it shows the serial number 35 and then 36 and 255 autofill and gateway. Do not configure, configure beam one adapter. Take this take, okay, view gateway. Okay, so there's no gateway IP, right? So I do have configured beam panel adapter. Okay, get to IP. So 192.168.1.1, right? Click next and finish. So for bmotion, I configure, okay, and add. I think I cannot add the BM kernel adapter on other host with the different. Let's see if I can, or otherwise I have to create new one for click next. Vmotion, click next. It's okay, yeah. So that one should be 10.15, 10 10.15.0, 10 what? So I have to check from here. We have already. So which one is for B motion? B motion here, 3435. Okay. This is 90.34. And subject mask is same. 255.255.255. Zero. So this one is 35. Oh. And this one. In panel adapter 10.15.90.1 and next and finish. And now DVS send, right? I schedule send. So if you add BM kernel adapter, okay, let's just go here. I schedule, right? I schedule and add a BM kernel adapter. Attach. So if I add all three together, what what will be? So you say the motion. Okay, that's in the second. Say. But I need different different right? So I have to cancel it. Uh, at of first three. Mm. At BM kernel adapter, wait for this three. Okay, and click next. And for B send, for B send, you don't need to do anything. For B send, you don't need to do anything, right? So I'm uh, sorry, not B send. Uh, for ice cases, you don't need to do anything. And if I just click next and IP. So what's the IP address we assigned for uh, sand storage? I schedule same. 24, 25, 26, right? 24, 25, 26. 24, 25, 26. 192.168.1.24. And then 25, then 26. And here, 725.255.255.0. And all, and it's pretty easy. And 192.168.1. Dot what? Not one. Next and finish. So the same thing I'm gonna do for the other two hosts in my New York data center at a BM kernel adapter. I 
test two. Okay. And click next. And I don't need to select anything from here because it's ice case is in. And click next. And I pv four. And I need to check actually what I deserve. Ice case in 24, 25. So yes, 10 dot, 15 dot, 90 dot, 24. And 255 dot, 255 dot, 255 dot, zero. And 25, and all, and same panel, 10 dot, 15 dot, 90 dot, one. Next, we finish. And, So now B send, right? B send. So B send the same thing, right click on it, edit, sorry, add a BM kernel adapter and add attach a host. Oh, sorry. Oh, where? B send, right? Why well, it's not showing my all host? Oh, sorry. B send only I configured this three. That's why. Okay. And click next. And here you have to select BSEN. And click next. And IPv4. What is the IPv4 we deserve for BSEN? So BSEN is 41, 42, 43. 41, 42. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's 44, 45, 46, 44. One sixty eight dot dot forty four, then two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero forty five and forty six and yes and okay and one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one next and finish. So we configure this and. We configure like this adapter. So network side, we already configured. All the network side, we already configured through distributed switch. So now come back here. All the host has the required. Okay, I'm going to take it out from the maintenance mode. And now I'm pretty safe. Okay, exit. Now, if you want to add storage, Share store, right? Data store. Mm -hmm. So send storage. How you want to add a send storage? You have to go to the data store. No, not not just to configure, and then uh, add a software adapter. You have to add a software SKG adapter. Click OK. So it's going to be added. Now the same thing here. Add a software adapter, you have to add it like this, okay. You have to add it here for all you need like this. Software adapter, okay. You have to add this. Software adapter, okay. Because all these are new, right? So add software adapter, you have to do the software adapter, okay. So now I'm com coming back here. So I have the software price case here. So the first thing is network port binding. I have to add here, add port binding. This is the BSN, right? Okay. I have added here and it's gonna be say scan, but I don't wanna do the scan first because I want to do the dynamic discovery first. Then I'll do finally, okay? So my iSCSI sensor is, I know 192.168.1.6. It's my sense storage. If you guys ask me why, how, you guys already know we implement the sand storage, right? I show you on my way of the fourth video, right? So that's how we get this. If you go to here, you're gonna see this, and then you can say your scan storage, okay. And then host number two, you're gonna add, you just need to add uh network port binding and add the adapter. This is the adapter, right? Just select it and dynamic discovery add. 
this and okay. And this one, same thing. Select the ISCAG adapter, put the network port binding, add a port, oh, ISCAG, right? Okay. And dynamic discovery. Okay, 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 okay. ISCAG, okay. And you see through the distributed switch. And then dynamic discovery, add this and six, okay. And this one, same thing, select this one, network discovery, add, and SKG send, okay. And then dynamic discovery, add, and six, which is my SKG send storage, okay, right? And you're gonna see the static within short time and say a scan and okay. I believe I didn't do the scan here. Did I do? Okay. I didn't do that. I didn't do that, right? Okay. And here, just do the this. Uh, select this, network port binding, add. Switch, okay. And also dynamic discovery. Add the server and six, okay. And this can, okay. So we already added. If you go here, now you're gonna see here you have this, right? You go to the device, you're gonna see here Unity iSCSI desk, right? So now this is the magic. So we did all kind of network set configuration, like implementing the software iSCSI and also add uh, network port, like which is port binding, dynamic discovery, everything is done. Now you just need to add a storage. So what are you gonna do? Storage, new data store, BMFS, click next. Data store name, what are you gonna do? You can say, and storage, right? Send zero one. Oh, it's not showing the loan. Why it's not showing the loan? Should be okay. Anyway. Oh, it's already there because it's here. It should be there. Send is here. You see. It should be here. It should be all of them here because on my main host, I already did it, right? So why it's not showing here? Let's see. Let's see why it's not showing. Okay, it's, it has some issues. Not a good binding. Mm -hmm. Okay, static, everything shows fine. Device, but it's not showing on the device. Okay, something wrong with this. We'll work with, uh, it's supposed to be sure. So there's no alternative, it should show. Okay, it should show. Okay, network port binding. If I'm going here, what it shows on the network port binding? It's compliance and active, right? This one, why it's not showing is as, as they come. Okay, I'm going to, Oh, so I'm going to remove this one, okay. And then add it back, add. Okay, scan storage, okay. Scan adapter, that's also okay. So, okay, now it's working. If you go to the data store, you're gonna see it, okay? So SAN is attached already with all. Now, what do you need to do? So you just need to do, now the, the main target. So BSAN, how are you gonna configure the BSAN? So BSAN is required, you have to have a cluster. And if you select this one and go to the configuration, the cluster, 
and all the way down, you can see the B sen. You can see the B sen here, right? So B sen is now turn off, right? So you can say configure and single side cluster. We're gonna do single side cluster. We have three SXA host, click next. And in here, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to touch anything, click just next. And in here, disk size, or based on the host like this, you can change it. It's just a clip disk for, okay? So you size or you can do with host. So host wise, to, uh, we have assigned two, right? So 100 gig, but remember one thing, uh, we're gonna do hybrid. So BSN configuration can, like your hard disk can be all flash or flash and HDD. So which is called hybrid. And this is a requirement. This is the requirement for cache tier. So there's two tier, cache tier and capacity tier. You have to configure. So at least minimum capacity tier, you can have multiple. It's not a problem based on your hard drive or partition. So I just added as an example only two. So the capacity tier is the, the big amount, big size. And so this is the one I added. And also make sure for getting better performance, you should have the same size of disk in each host. So I'm going to create flash, now mark as a flash for this one. And this one is DD and the SDD one will be capacity tier and, and flash one will be cache tier. So now it's okay, right? And then the second host I'm going to create, um, what? Um, capacity tier 900 and this one will be changed to flash and cache tier. And then now here is capacity tier and this one changed to mark as a flash because this one I'm gonna assign as a cache tier. So I did all and see configuration is correct. And also I'm getting claim cache is 300, 300. Three hundred gigabyte. So, claim cache, 300 terabyte, okay. And host, okay. So uh, it's adding all, okay, oh, sorry. The claim cache is 300 because 100 to 100 for three host and the claim capacity is 2.64 terabyte. So that means what? 900, 900, 900. It's total 2.64 terabyte. And now what you can do? what you can do here. So click next, nothing else, right? So it's already added here. Click next and finish. So it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple, but the preparation, like what are you gonna do? What should be the size? So that's all our matter. But it's not gonna show on my host, why? Uh, Actually, I didn't enable or disable whatever. I didn't do that. The idea is, it's not a problem, but the whole thing is the same thing. As the same storage, I attach what? You see here, SCSI, device path. Oh yeah, I have, I have, Okay, it should be shown whenever it's completed because the adapter I already configured as a, a BSEN. So BSEN traffic will be sent through this. If you don't have configured the BSEN um, uh, BM kernel port group, then you're not gonna see the data store. So hopefully within short time, which we'll be able to see, you see here BSEN data store. 
is zero, but it's still is going to, it's, it's still is configuring. So we have to wait until it's finished. All right, it's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. So post, okay, 1.7 terabyte, okay. 1.76 terabyte. So it's still, it's still some of the host is still running. So I'm, we have to wait until it's finished, right? So then we're gonna see here, the total 2.67 uh, or something terabyte, right? So we just need to wait until it's finished. So now each and every host, we have an environment. So we can create our VM. So we have distributed switch, we have a standard switch. And in this video, it's a complete, I know this is a pretty big video, but whenever you try to implement it, so you can maybe uh, watch this video, you can forward, you can pause, and because any, any way you can manage it, right? So it, it, it's not mandatory that you have to finish it like the whole video in the same day or same time, it's up to you. So it's almost done. I just need to uh, wait for this. It will be done eventually. Uh, so what I got here. So if you go here, you're gonna see a lot of data stores. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of data store, right? Oof. Okay. See here, NAS storage, BCSN storage. It's a lot, it's a lot. Okay, so this is actually, these two are usable actually. And um, those two, first one, get a disk group on BCN, okay? It's creating the BCN group. It's almost 90% done. So it's just taking the time, that's it. And now we have, I have some BM. So I can, okay, almost, it's look like, it's look like it's almost done. Okay, 93% is improved. So there the store. Ooh. And if individual, okay, it's almost done. Oh, it's done. It's done. Good news, it's done. So it's ready, the environment is ready. So we, each and every host we have sand storage, we have BSAM and the local storage. So now it's, we can migrate BM, we can do anything. So I just, as an example, I just want to show you so we have some BM here. Um, say for example, our, uh, jump machine, right? So jump machine, say for example, my grid, next. Okay. Cluster. Okay, right click on it, migrate. Next. Uh, actually, oh, sorry. I'm not going to do the post. I'm going to change that storage because previously it's used NAS storage. I'm not gonna use NAS, I'm gonna use SAN or I'm gonna use um, And here is, I have some storage. So I'm going to use this one, click next and finish. Okay, okay. Anyway, it's not a problem. Maybe you can uh, migrate it to other 
Okay, so where it is right now? It's two, right? Jump machine, right? My grade. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so this is the way you can migrate everything. And yeah, that's all. So here's the complete BSEN configuration, the standard switch configuration, distributed switch configuration. This is the summary. Um, iSCSI send storage configuration and BSEN configuration with nested ESXi. So if you guys, um like my video please give a big thumbs up and also share with your friends or colleague or co-worker and if you are new in my channel please subscribe my channel and also don't forget to click the bell icon to get my next video uh notification thank you thanks for watching